know, if this were just a discussion about how to design nice public spaces, I wouldn't be so alarmed. More than 39 countries have hired Jan Gale to redesign their public places in the image of Copenhagen's pedestrianized city center. The entire framing of this particular enterprise is very questionable. Uh, these placemakers paint a socially benign and aesthetically purified picture of public space. This particular vision has been uncritically accepted. It not only maintains the status quo, but I would argue that it exacerbates ethnic disparities and inequalities. Uh, I call this feel-good public space because that's its goal. Going back quickly 150 years, Frederick Law Olmsted saw himself as a kind of social engineer, and he designed the park as a civilizing tool. He ignored and, in fact, saw the park as an important alternative to the other kinds of public activities that were taking place in the streets of New York. And by the turn of the 20th century, you can see that working classes made their way uptown to Central Park, where they actually started to have picnics on the grass, something that Olmsted was completely against. In the creation of this particular placemaking discourse is the 1960s, when Jane Jacobs published her classic work, The Death and Life of Great American Cities. There is a glaring omission, uh, and that omission is race. But I would also point out that at the same time Jane Jacobs was celebrating the sidewalk, other Americans were making far more radical demands on public space. Protests transformed buses, sidewalk streets, and even the Washington Mall into discursive sites where physical presence asserted the rights of equal citizenship. Placemakers promote public spaces where people feel safe and good. Such places combine feelings of comfort and pleasure with a limited amount of diversity. And what happens when you remove race and ethnicity from public space issues? What happens is basically Bloomberg's New York. The city made many, many streetscape improvements and sponsored such high profile public spaces as the High Line. Another Bloomberg uh, public space initiative is Stop and Frisk. What could be an alternative approach? Wright's talk focuses on social, political, and economic considerations and directly connects public spaces with issues of equality, democracy, and citizenship. So here is a list of rights that I think would constitute new definitions of public space. Public space is a complex uh, and contested social and spatial condition. And in order to realize rights, our definitions of public space have to move beyond just feeling good in public. Public space is going to continually be transformed by demands and struggles. Thank you.